This is a war of cargo ships. The shipyards of America are working day and night, but building them is only half the job. Crews must be built too, and built fast. A hundred thousand men must learn the ways of ships in two short years. Here at Hoffman Island in lower New York Bay, experienced seamen learn new things about new ships, new ways to meet new dangers. Handling a lifeboat is not easy. A torpedo doesn't wait for men to learn. Trained men, experienced men, know what to do. Boat drill is the order. One hour every day for four months. Target practice. American seamen are trained to meet the unexpected. They're ready for whatever danger strikes. Broadside and anti-aircraft guns give the crews on our bridge of ships a crack at lurking submarines and surface raiders, a better chance to save their lives and cargoes. Nothing that can protect the men and ships from wartime dangers is overlooked. Gas rescue work is vital when fire strikes at sea. Another case when knowing how saves lives. Actual work in the ship's machine shop and with the welding torch makes it possible to repair breakdowns and damage at sea. Ships move on. They're not laid up in port so often or so long. At Gallops Island in Boston Harbor, hundreds of young men qualify as sparks in from six to nine months. They learn code and typing together, preparing for a necessary and time-honored profession. They learn a democratic discipline, stern but necessary to the safety of any ship. The rules of seamanship and conduct that fit them for a job at sea. The United States Merchant Marine Cadet Corps trains officers for the complex job of running a modern ship. Navigation, to steer a ship and see her through, to know the compass, to deliver cargoes safely. Shooting the sun, to use a sextant to find the ship's position, latitude and longitude. Read the charts and plot a course along the right sea lanes, moving with wind and tide and current, steering clear of danger. To learn the signals, bells and whistles, to use the telegraph from bridge to engine room, to understand the instruments and gauges, how to read them and what each has to tell. Powerful, modern engines drive our victory fleet. The men who run them get a thorough training for their important task. At historic Fort Trumbull in New London, Connecticut, and at Government Island in San Francisco Bay, training stations have been established for officers up from the ranks. These are older men with sea experience going back to school now to learn the things that officers must know. Mathematics for navigation and engineering, spherical trigonometry and calculus. The American seaman and her sister ship, the American sailor, are the largest training vessels maintained by any government in the world. 
More than 300 men are trained at one time on each of these ships. And there are more than a dozen other training vessels, including one of the Maritime Commission's 1,500 new Liberty ships. Tough, reliable, capable cargo ships. Built to do a job and doing it. From waterfront cities, small towns and farms, boys and young men come for these training courses. All young Americans are eligible, and sailors in our merchant fleet are just as important in this war as soldiers in the Army. No previous experience is necessary. A healthy body, a clean character, and a mind alert. Hard work and study call for good food and plenty of it. Cooks and bakers are trained at all apprentice seamen training units, and they know their stuff. A seaman has to know a lot of things. He starts with simple chores, to box a compass and a class on deck, to know his ropes and how to tie sailor's knots, to handle lines and splice a hawser. To know the meaning of the signal flags. To read and send messages in code with semaphore. These are a few of many things he learns. The day's work starts with washing down the decks. Both ships and men are better if they're clean. Down to work and classes. To learn by watching and by doing. To light a new oil burner beneath a boiler. Men work better when they know the how and why. Here they learn them well. Abandoned ship. Boat drill. In these grim days, a seaman's work's no fishing trip. No Sunday picnic. No moonlight excursion with soft music. It's not a job for chicken-hearted fellows. It's for men with guts and good red blood. It's hard work with danger in it. But training for emergencies cuts down the danger. And training today takes full account of every lurking threat. Come what may, trained men know what to do. That's why there's more and more of this knowing by doing. Learning how to launch a lifeboat. Learning to go over the side and how to operate the many kinds of lifeboats, rafts, and launches. Graduation muster. They're full trained seamen now, ready to serve their country in the way they've chosen, ready for storm or danger or peace with the sea. In the greatest war the world has ever known, we fight with our lives. We are the United Nations, united across the seas by a bridge of ships. In convoys bound for many fronts, American seamen do their job. They'll get the planes and tanks and guns and food the Army needs to where it needs them. Ships and brave men working together make it possible to fight. So we're building ships at scores of ports along our coast, building parts in Denver and Kansas City and Pittsburgh, and sending them by railroad to the sea, there to be joined, riveted and welded launched and sailed away. Soon three a day, 2,300 merchant ships before the end of 1943 will come from United States shipyards. The Maritime Commission is building the ships and the War Shipping Administration is training the men to sail them. If you have never been to sea but want to be trained for a sea job, apply to the local office of the United States Employment Service or the War Shipping Administration's enrolling office in your city.